Good morning and welcome to New Day Northwest. The groundhog says spring is coming and I want desperately to believe him, but with the spring come hungry deer into our yards. We love them, but we don't want them munching our plants. So we invited landscape designer and author of Deer Resistant Design, Karen Chapman, to help sort it all out. How are you? I'm fine, nice to be here, thank you. This is a problem that, that we have, Absolutely. and it's sort of a two-pronged thing, because I love seeing the deer, mm -hmm. but I also don't want them to eat the plants. Right, right. So what is the thing that we most often do that may be the wrong thing right. in response? I think the most common thing is we rush out to the nursery and we grab any and all plants which say they're deer resistant and we just put them in a space thinking that's going to translate into a beautiful design. But that's not actually the best approach. That's that's sort of the panic approach. It is, Buy totally. Plants, stick them in the ground. So what is a better solution for us? I discovered that really it comes down to good design. Uh, does good design comes first and I actually start with the hardscape and non-edible focal points. Oh, okay, let's talk about that. Okay. What would that mean? Well, hardscape is everything which isn't the plant. So think in terms of the patios and the pathways, things which ascribe function to a space, but they do more than that if you've got deer because they actually allow us to um, create a sense of order. So we're looking now at our house when we first moved in. Mm -hmm. This was the realtor's picture, and somewhere behind all that mush of plants is <laughs> a house. Actually, this looks like my front yard. <laughs> I've got a mush of plants, okay. too, so help me out here. Okay, so you know the problem is you can't even see where the front door is, let alone get to it. And yes, it's I just relate. been filled with a lot of plants, most of which are deer resistant. Now, if we shoot to the after, oh, this is what yes. I did with it. And now we have a sense that somebody actually thought about this. We can see a <laughs> pathway, we can see a patio. There are still deer resistant plants, but they're combined more effectively. And those two blue containers act as a really lovely focal point. And that's especially important that we don't use specimen trees as focal points, because you know what's going to happen. The deer will decide that's the day that they just want to go and sample that particular right, tree. Right, exactly. So that makes a lot of sense. Plus, it right. looks beautiful. You Thank did you. Well, of course, you are a landscape designer, <laughs> so this makes sense. So selecting plants, there are different levels of deer resistance, right. and I'm not really sure I know what they mean when I go into the nursery, mm -hmm. so can you kind of take us through that? Yeah, and it's really hard because all the tags tell you oh, they're deer resistant or not, and actually there are four levels of deer resistance. I think the most hopeful, um, helpful thing we can do is direct people to what we call the Rutgers list. And that's a website where you can type in either the common or botanical name of a plant. There it is. There we go. So you can type into that search box the name of a plant and it will tell you whether it's resistance level A, B, C or D. Is A the top? So A is rarely damaged at all. D is forget about it. Got Think it. about this as deer caviar. So before you go out and grab all those mm -hmm. plants, do a little research. Absolutely. And see what you've got. Then you say create a foliage framework, and I'm not entirely sure what that means, right. but you can demo with uh, the Certainly. plants you brought today. What and smells so good? It's Which the one Daphne. Is, uh, this is gorgeous. And this is a good one to chat beautiful. about right at the beginning. Obviously, it has flowers that are beautifully fragrant, but this variegated leaf itself is pretty. So should the deer decide this is the year they're going to come and nibble <laughs> the Daphne, which they're not supposed to do, we still have these beautiful leaves. That's, I wouldn't have even thought right. about that. And something similar here, you've We've got this beautiful color. That's right. Lots. I mean, we've very, very few flowers on the table right now. But this is especially important with deer because they love to eat flower buds. And so, if we have things with this foliage framework, we're going to be able to disguise some of that damage that might occur. That's important. You also say um, we need to vary the textures and heights. Mm -hmm. Why does that help protect the plants? Again, it's disguise. It's all smokes and mirrors. It's so all you're disguise. taking the more vulnerable ones and kind of well a little. Making them that, harder to get to. But it's, you know, everything here would be deer resistance A. But you know, just because I've said that, the deer are going to come through <laughs> and decide they quite fancy this, this hellebore. Uh, totally. And so I love hellebores. Thank Those you. Are great. If we have a mixture of different heights and different types of leaves, and they do a bit of nibbling here and a little bit of nibbling there, overall we still have a beautiful design. And that's part of what we need to do as we're looking at some of the pictures of mm -hmm. the design. Here's, you know, different textures, right, different, different heights. Different heights of because plants. Because part of what you're encouraging us to do is, yes, get the deer-resistant plants, yes, think about what you're doing mm -hmm. out there, but maintain a beautiful design. Absolutely. There's no reason why we can't have a garden which is just as beautiful as someone who isn't challenged by deer. <laughs> <laughs> and so if we're going about this and we're combining deer-resistant plants, mm -hmm. and all of these are, right? Yes, they Every are. Every one of these yes. are, are A's. So you've got, you know, cool things like this, mm -hmm. 
beautiful colors, some with flowers, some not. Um, it can be I hard to this. know where to start. Yeah, can't it? I mean, seriously. Yeah. So when you go out and once you've designed, you know, an idea of what mm -hmm. you want to do and you've checked to see how deer resistant they are, then talk to me a little bit about combining these Absolutely. in a way that really works. And the way I do it is in three steps. And this works for container gardens, small patios or big acreage like I have. The first thing I do is look for my spotlight plant. Mm -hmm. And I might look for something like this euphorbia, which is called Ascot Rainbow. It's got beautiful so multicolored leaves. It's got the yellow and a kind of a blue green with a little bit of burgundy. Mm -hmm. So I'd look for that as a starting point and then step two would be to highlight one of those colors perhaps with this blue star juniper mm -hmm. which is bringing out that same shade. That's beautiful. Look at those. And then you know that's nice but at this point I'm ready for the limelight which I call party time <laughs> and introduce something unexpected perhaps this beautiful silver senecio, big bold leaves and all three of those plants would be beautiful in a container or a landscape and they will all suit full sun. We could even add in some little daffodils if you wanted to add flowers. And then you pick up the yellow and you've got totally. quite a thing there. So that would work for um, the sun. Should we do one for shade? Yeah, let's do one okay. for shade. Because so I have a lot of that. There we go. That so big have a lot of sun oh. anywhere. <laughs> well, they do in my garden, but that <laughs> shrub next to you there, that's a Lakota way. Yeah, called Rainbow. And look at all the colors that's on gorgeous. there. It's beautiful. So we want to highlight one of those colors and I might be tempted let's should we put that at the front you bet there we go and then we could actually mix this up with one of our native plants this is one of the Oregon grapes um, a Mahonia and look at the way that pulls out those burgundy That's colors beautiful. but leaves are different so now we're ready for something different again you've got it that's I know, exactly I why I have going my eye this one. there we I go fun so there are so many gorgeous hellebores and this particular one has got all sorts of the shades of the cream and the pink which are repeated here you know and if you wanted to develop it add something introduce something different you could bring That's in the black beautiful. mondo grass and i love the the moss uh, the, what are these called That's called an autumn um, fern and the, they're really deer resistant really i see that would be one that i would think oh the deer are going to love no, this but it is deer resistant is. and again you've got the colors that That's you can right. pick up and everything you, here would totally. work together yeah so you wrote this book on deer resistant design mm -hmm. and and then I realized well I'm obviously not the only one lots <laughs> of people have this issue I remember mm -hmm. my parents-in-law in Colorado would have their yard look beautiful mm -hmm. and then they had wire mesh over all of their plants. oh my gosh <laughs> yes yeah Which cages was, yes exactly yeah. Yeah. doesn't make your landscape design uh -huh. really sing right yeah. but lots of people have this problem and your book is a guide to walk us all the way through it so that mm -hmm. when, once we've spent the money on plants and we put them out or other spaces that we actually don't have to redo it or panic right, in the middle of, right. of spring in particular. Yeah. No, it shares the story of 13 tenacious gardeners, including myself, and it tells their design criteria, what they really wanted from their garden. It talks about their strategies, their tips, their plant combinations. And, you know, I feel that that then enables us to create the gardens that we really want, despite the deer, without resorting to 10-foot high fences. Right, and we can still enjoy the deer coming mm -hmm. through. So there's some seasonal protection we can do as right. well, and you brought some of I this. I brought some things. It's a bit like what you have in your pantry. You always have the flour and the milk and the sugar. Yeah. You know, I always have some repellents <laughs> on hand. And I've got a couple here. This one is Deer Out. This is a peppermint-based spray, so it doesn't smell bad. Right. Um, it's not toxic. It's no, not toxic. Not gonna no. Anything. That's going to be a really good one. Another popular one is um, this one, which is Liquid Fence, which also protects against rabbits, um, which is a real problem. We yes. have a bumper crop of those. We do. I have water shipped down in my garden yes. right now. <laughs> and then the third one I've got is a little bit different. This is Plant Skid, which is a blood meal base. I would just say if you have dogs, be careful of this. My last two golden retrievers thought this was caviar oh. and went around the garden trying to pick up the little granules. No, no, no. My we current golden that. retriever is clueless. She, <laughs> she hasn't figured it out. She's smarter. <laughs> I don't know. One of the two. But, you know, I have a selection of these on hand to use as needed. That's a great idea, especially, I think the rabbits are like... They are an issue. Just, yeah. They're, they aren't kidding about the reproduction no. of, of rabbits. Karen, thank you very much. My pleasure. Karen thank Speaks you. and Science Books at the Northwest Flower and Garden Show on Saturday, February 29th at 1 p.m. We'll have all the ticket information on our website for you. You can go and learn much more. Thank you.